out on the internet, I want to know how far away is Anchorage from Washington? 4,280 miles, and I think some of you tried to get away from Washington. Yeah. <laughs> Part of the spirit of Alaska, the spirit of the West, are those who did want to get away from a big government. Those who thought, you know what, there is a right to be left alone. Justice Brandeis said this in a court case in 1928, he said, the most cherished of rights is the right to be left alone. So I stood on the Senate floor for 10 and a half hours, my feet are still sore, and I stood for 10 and a half hours to defend your right to be left alone. The government, the president in particular, thinks that there's no problem with collecting all of your phone records all of the time. Well, I have a couple problems with it. Number one, it hasn't worked. We haven't caught one terrorist by looking at all your phone records. And yet we've invaded all of your privacy. And people say, well, the new standard is, if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. That's sort of a step down from the old standard, isn't it? Innocent until proven guilty. The Bill of Rights is about defending your right to be left alone. It's about defending the rights of minorities. And you say, well, I'm not a minority. You can be a minority because of the color of your skin or the shade of your ideology. You can be a minority because you wanted to get away from the rest of the mainland and come up here. You can be a minority because you teach your kids at home. You can be a minority because you're an evangelical Christian. You can be a minority because you're Jewish or you believe that the government ought to leave you alone. There's a lot of reasons why you can be a minority, but the Bill of Rights is about protecting that. It's about saying to the government, you don't come into my house without my name on a warrant. John Adams said that the spark that led to the American Revolution was really this right to be left alone. James R. Otis was arguing that letting the British soldiers write their own warrants with no one's name on it and go into any house, that this was a great violation of liberty. All 55 candidates running for president on the Republican side <laughs> are probably for the Second Amendment. But you know what? You can't defend the Second Amendment if you don't defend the Fourth Amendment. You remember a couple of years ago in that county west of uh, New York City, they had a registry on who had guns and who did. Well, they decided to put it in the newspaper. Well, there's several people I can think of automatically who might not want their name in the newspaper, whether they do have a gun or don't have a gun. Prosecutors, judges, women who've been abused by a boyfriend or a husband. Do you want everybody to know whether you do or don't have a gun? One of the great things about gun ownership is it's a deterrent. Criminals don't know who does and who doesn't have a gun, and they know about half of us do. And I tell people, if you want to know if I defend the Second Amendment, don't come in my house, I'm an animal. <laughs> <laughs> we have to defend the whole Bill of Rights. That means the First Amendment also. The First Amendment says that you have the right to choose your religion. It says that Congress shall pass no law obstructing your religion or your practice of religion. There comes a time, and there's coming a time, when we're gonna to have to tell the government that we are barring the doors and you are not allowed in our church. We're not going to let you dictate what we do or say in our church. Yeah. Dan mentioned uh, the right to life. Some who say, well, you're a libertarian. Don't you believe in the right to women? Well, certainly I believe in the rights of women and men. But the thing is, is that there's a libertarian non-aggression principle. It says you can't aggress against another individual. So if you want to argue that a seven-pound baby that hasn't been born has no rights, make that argument. But the interesting thing is, is even the people among us who are pro-choice, most of them have a difficult time arguing that a seven-pound baby doesn't have rights. So what these videos of Planned Parenthood have pointed out is they have pointed out that this is a baby with organs. This is a baby with a heart. 
This is a baby with a brain, with a liver. And when the doctor so callously says livers are popular, you have to think about what that liver was attached to. And so I promise you and tell you that as long as I'm in the Senate and where I'd be privileged enough to be the president, I'm not giving one taxpayer dollar to plan for <laughs> too large if they have 48 federal SWAT teams. The Department of Education has a SWAT team. They arrested a man and handcuffed him for six hours for non-payment of student debt. Unfortunately, it wasn't his student debt. It turns out it was his girlfriend's student debt. The, unit, the Department of Agriculture has a SWAT team. You know what they, they arrested somebody for not too long ago? Selling milk directly from the cow. We've gone crazy that we have a federal government that has 48 agencies with SWAT teams. They arrested an Amish man for selling milk across state lines from the cow. At dawn, dawn raid on an Amish farmer. For goodness sakes, do we not have other things going on? Rapists and murderers and other people that we can arrest without arresting somebody for selling milk. We've gone crazy. There are thousands and thousands of federal crimes now. Do you know how many federal crimes there are in the Constitution? Four, treason, counterfeiting, piracy. Most things were supposed to be handled by the state. You think Alaska might be able to figure out what is a wetland and what isn't a wetland? <laughs> The Clean Water Act says that you can't discharge pollutants into a navigable stream. I think most of us are for that. You shouldn't be able to dump oil or benzene into a river or a bay. That should be illegal. We do have laws against that. But you know what happened? Over time, we changed the definition of a pollutant to be dirt, and we changed the definition of a navigable water to be your backyard. There doesn't have to even be standing water to be a wetland. They can drill a soil sample, and if there's any water in the soil, it's a wetland. Now they say, if a bird landed on the bay, and then landed in your backyard, then you are now connected by the migratory bird rule. So really, your backyard is part of the bay, which is protected by the federal government, so your backyard is now owned and regulated, not owned, but regulated by the federal government. We've let government go too far in invading our lives. And in the meantime, it's extraordinarily expensive. We borrow a million dollars a minute. So we borrow money from China to pay for our daily expenses. But to make things worse, we borrow money from China to send it to Pakistan. This week, on my office, or last week, came out with a report. We spent $250,000 last year on 24 kids from Pakistan to send them to space camp in Alabama. Anybody want to send your kid to space camp? I don't think we'd send one of your kids, but we'll go halfway across the world to use taxpayer dollars to send a kid from another country. We don't even have the money. We'll borrow the money from China to do this. I've said at the very least what we ought to do is quit funding our enemies and quit borrowing money from China to send it to countries that hate us. Amen. <laughs> Pushing Assad back. We have 
insane people in our party that want to bomb Assad and ISIS simultaneously. Yes. Two sides of their war. Realize that the government in Baghdad, the Shiite government in Baghdad, you know their closest ally is? Iran. So we don't want Iran to have nuclear weapons, but we're arming an ally that is fighting alongside Iran in the Iraqi war. But I've said if you really want to get something useful for the Iraqi army, the next thing we should buy them is tear away uniforms so when they run, they can tear their uniforms off. <laughs> ISIS will only be defeated when Sunni Islam decides to participate. All of the territory they occupy is occupied by Sunni Islam. Shiite Islam in Baghdad is not, doesn't have the courage or the will or the ability to occupy these Sunni cities. They won't defeat them. The Kurds are good fighters. If you want to arm somebody, arm the Kurds. If there's one truth that has come out of the Middle East, is that we need to think before we act. We need to think of the unintended consequences before we get involved. And we need to think about this one truth that I think is incontrovertible. That every time we've toppled a secular strongman, we've gotten chaos, the rise of radical Islam, and more problems. We're less safe, it's more chaotic. In Libya, in Libya now, I think we are more likely to be attacked than we were under Gaddafi. We toppled Gaddafi, now a third of Libya pledges allegiance to ISIS. <coughs> we are less safe now because of Gaddafi being gone. But it's the same in Syria. Is Assad a dictator? Yes. But ask any Syrian Christian, and there are two million of them, ask who they would rather run their country, Assad or ISIS. Nobody votes for ISIS. They would vote for Assad. Is he a dictator? Yes, but he protected the Christians for decades. So we have to think before we act, before we get involved in these wars. We have to think about what we're doing. And unfortunately, we haven't. Now, I will do whatever it takes to defend our country, our soldiers, our embassies. I will defend America. But the thing is, is that I'm not eager for another war. So you got a bunch of other choices. If you want a half a million troops back in the Middle East, if you want another 15 or 20 year war, I'm not your guy. You've got lots of other choices. But I do believe that defending the country is the number one priority of the federal government, and I will defend our country. I believe in peace through strength. I believe Reagan had it right. I mean, people misinterpret Reagan. They thought Reagan was just this cowboy who wanted to go everywhere. Reagan was actually very judicious with the interventions that he got involved with. Reagan also negotiated with the Soviets. Reagan was a more complex character than people give him credit for. But Reagan did believe in a strong national defense. He did believe in stopping our enemies. But he didn't always believe that intervention was the answer. We're gonna come up with another crisis again this year in government. There'll be another either you vote for this or the government shuts down. We lurch from crisis to crisis. I say, you know what? If it means continuing to borrow a million dollars a minute, shut it all down. Yeah. Now, it's not that I'm gleeful about shutting the government down, but I am steadfast in saying that we can't go on this way. We need to reform government. Why is it we elect Republicans? We're in charge of the House and Senate, and yet we're going to work up against another deadline. It is absolutely insane. You know, the last time government shut down, they sent a notice around to all the congressmen. And they said, List which of your employees are essential and which are unessential. And I said, man, we're gonna learn something here. And so I said, call up the IRS and see what their list is like. So we called the IRS and they said they were 90% unessential. <laughs> I said, man, this is great. Call the EPA, 95% unessential. But then you know what I learned? It's just like everything else in government. Somebody's game in the system. Turns out that if you're unessential, you don't have to show up for work, but you still get paid. Yeah. It's more expensive to have your government closed than it is to have it open. But during the shutdown, they did discover a few things. They found a guy over the EPA who had been downloading porn six hours a day on his government computer. And you're like, well, at least we found him, right? He'd been fired works for the government. You can't fire an employee. He's still working there, for all I know. 
We have to pass like a new law to be able to fire people. The contract's like 50 pages long and 100 lawyers you go through to get rid of somebody, even for abusing their office. One woman had employed 17 family members as paid interns. Another woman was selling vitamins and jewelry off of her computer at work all day long. But my favorite is this guy named Jonathan Peel. He was the right-hand man for Gina McCarthy. He was her expert in global warming. <laughs> but they looked at his attendance record. He'd been missing 50% of the time. And they asked his boss, why, why does he keep getting great you know, reviews, great reviews and bonuses every year? He's up to the maximum civil servant. He's making $170,000 a year. And it's like, why does he get all this? He's only there all the time. And he said, well, Jonathan's also in the CIA. Really, he's in the EPA and the CIA simultaneously. Well, they did something extraordinary. They called the CIA. You know what they said? Jonathan who? They never heard of him. So I imagine Jonathan Beale, your typical great government employee in Washington, the one you're paying our taxes to support. I imagine him on a typical day. He's laying by his pool because he's got to have a pool, right? He's probably drinking a beer. And his boss calls and says, Jonathan, are you coming in? He's like. No, I'm in Istanbul on secret assignment. <laughs> this is the problem with your government. Stuff that you would never approve of continues to go on and on. I had an amendment to the Foreign Relations Committee, and I said, let's send no more money to countries that persecute Christians. How did I define persecution of Christians? I said, any country that puts to death Christians for criticizing state religion, Christians for interfaith marriage, or people who change their religion to become a Christian. There's about 25 countries like this that receive your tax dollars. So I said, let's just stop that. Who, who wants to send money to countries that persecute Christians? You know what the vote was? 18 to two to continue sending your money to all of these horrible countries. Pakistan's one of them. We give billions of dollars to Pakistan, and yet a woman by the name of Asia Bibi, about five years ago, went to a well to draw water. As she was at the well drawn water, the Muslim women of the town began beating her with sticks and stoning her. She was bleeding and going to the ground as they were beating her with sticks. She's crying out for help. And as the police arrived, she thought, I've been saved, I've been rescued, only to be arrested. She's been on death row for five years because you know what the Muslim women said that were beating her with sticks? Said she had said something against the state's religion. So the thing is, is that your country, your government is not representing you very well. 18 to two, every Democrat voted to continue sending aid to those countries. And every Republican, except for one other and myself, voted to continue sending aid to these countries. I say at the very least, why don't we quit arming our enemies and sending money to countries that hate us and chant death to America? Not one day more. <laughs>
Right now you have corporations who pay zero. They spend, they spend millions of dollars and thousands of pages filling out complicated forms to pay no taxes. You also have some wealthy individuals doing this. So this would be fair. Everybody would pay. It would be simple and hard to obey. It would also be such a low rate that people would probably pay it without as much fuss. I predict that so much money would be left in the economy that there'd be such an upgrowth of the economy that actually after a while revenue would begin to actually rise to government because of growth. We are getting clobbered. We are chasing American jobs and American companies overseas. We have the highest business tax in the whole world. We gotta wake up and do something different. But I can tell you that government is so big and the inertia is so strong that it's not gonna change with any old Republican. You get an establishment Republican up there, they're gonna be a little better than the Democrats, but are they really gonna change the direction of government? The last time we had Republicans in charge, we doubled the debt. I ran for office because I was unhappy with Republicans who promised to be conservative and they weren't conservative. The whole Tea Party uprising was about fake conservatives. People who ran for office and said they cut the debt and the debt bubble. People said they were against bailing out big business, and then Republicans voted to bail out the big banks. So this is about honesty. It is about sincerity. It's about who will actually change the direction of government. I think we can win again, but I think we need to be boldly for what we are for. More boldly for what we are for. It isn't about diluting what we stand for. It's about boldly standing up for it. It's about being the party of the entire Bill of Rights. It's about saying that with criminal justice, some of our kids make mistakes with drugs, but putting them in jail for a decade or 20 years or life for making a mistake with drugs is wrong, and I think we ought to give our kids a second chance for that. There was a painter by the name of Robert Henry. And he said to the young painters, his exhortation was, paint like a man coming over the hill singing. And I like the image of that. I think when we become the party that proclaims our message with a passion of Patrick Henry, but also with the optimism and hope of a man coming over the hill singing, then we're going to be the dominant party again. That's the party I want to be part of, and I hope you do too. Thank you very much.